But most importantly, we've never had an administration actively engaged in trying to destroy its political candidate. And when I say actively, Jack Smith had no record of success as a special counsel. Uh, the Bob McConnell case in Virginia, it was a complete disaster. And his wife has made a, uh, a very favorable documentary of Michelle Obama. He's a partisan. Um, and he is charging Trump with essentially the same crimes that Robert Hur said that the president was guilty of Joe Biden, but he could not be prosecuted because of his, I guess you'd call it cognitive decline. Then we had Fannie Willis, the Georgia prosecutor, who's paramour and chief investigator, Nathan Wade, and they were under a cloud of suspicion. Why would he go to the White House counsel's office and consult with them? It's just, I mean, how many, how many local, de- in, of the thousands of local DAs, none of them are ever invited to the White House to talk to the council. And then finally, why would the third highest person in the DOJ of hundreds of prosecutors take a cut or resign to go work in the Manhattan plague scandal Alvin Bragg office? And yet, that all happened. So I think people realize that the left felt that it could break constitutional norms through lawfare or trying to remove Trump from the ballot or pitching him twice as soon as they won the majority in the House or tried him as a private citizen. And I think that's one reason why this morning in the Quinnipiac poll, he's four to five points ahead nationally and he's ahead in all the swing states. Join renowned historian and political commentator Victor Davis Hanson as he delves deep into the current political climate, focusing on the unprecedented actions taken by the current administration against its political opponents. Moreover, Hanson explores the impact of the current administration's policies on the nation, addressing issues like the border crisis, inflation, foreign policy blunders, and rising crime rates. He contrasts these with historical economic policies and the consequences of modern monetary theory, offering a critical perspective on the long-term sustainability of such approaches. Each time we have been told that should Donald Trump actually be convicted of a crime, or first it said if he's actually indicted of a crime, it's going to hurt him. And we found out in the primary, Ron DeSantis was four or five points ahead when Trump was indicted, and then that reversed on almost automatic. Then we were told if he were to be convicted and the rubric convicted felon would be used, that would be detrimental. So in the Bragg case, he was kept off the campaign trail for most of five weeks. And he used the New York environment to appeal to non-traditional constituencies, Latinos, blacks, poor people in the outer boroughs. And he, he actually went up and he was running almost dead even and now he's ahead. So we don't know. They, they believe that if he's actually in jail, and I do believe Alvin Bragg tried to put him in jail, then that will be a stigma, stigmata that he, that he can't get overcome. I don't think that's true. I think the people feel that this revolutionary Jacobin party hijacked the government for three and a half years. They destroyed the border. They gave us hyperinflation. They humiliated us in Afghanistan. They don't know what they're doing with Ukraine or Israel. Crime is out of control, and uh, we're draining the strategic petroleum reserve again before the election, but we have plenty of oil in the ground that they won't pump. So I think those are going to be the issues, and um, uh, as well as his cognitive decline. I hope Trump is a little calm tonight, because if history is any guide, during one of the two debates, the State of the Union, that abhorrent Phantom of the Opera uh, semi-fascist hyper-maga speech. In each of those cases, he, he, he abdicated his role as president for four or five days, slept, and then there was all these rumors swirling around of the cognitive stimulants that he had taken to animate him. If you look at where these big uh, deficits started, really, Bush did it because of the war, but Obama, that was the stimuli after the 2008 meltdown. And we got interest rates high, but then at the end, toward the end, we were down to almost zero. We were z- practically because of inflation at two or three percent under Obama, and then it went under Trump down to two percent. But we had almost zero zero interest rates, real interest rates. 
the interest rate was lower than the rate of inflation and that that encouraged people and they were, and you actually heard it spoken that under modern monetary theory the left said it's just a gimmick of numbers we we print the money we control the money supply we can do whatever we want and with zero interest it's a win-win situation because we can spend more money on entitlements and then all these wealthy people who have bought T-bills and bought U.S. bonds will get beat. They don't get any interest on it. We'll pay them back in inflated dollars. And that was almost when you listen to uh, some of the people around Obama before the interest rates uh, took off in 22, that was what they said. Only they had a fancy name called mon modern monetary theory. And so that interest the interest, the hyperinflation, and then the subsequent reaction with higher interest it destroyed that concept, and it's no longer going to be. I don't think we'll ever see uh, zero, de facto zero or one or two percent interest rates again in my lifetime. I'm 70. I don't think you'll see. If I, I don't see you'll see it for 10 more years, because we this uh, everybody understands it's unsustainable, because um, all it does is encourage rapid uh, deficit spending. When we look at Europe. We always thought that Europe was crazy, it was socialist, it did things that we would never consider. But when you look at these issues that we have uh, embraced, high, high taxation that is completely targeted at wealthy people, and then you look at our crime and the way that we react to crime, and you look at our open border to, compared to the Greek border or Italian border or French border, you can make the argument um, that Europe is much more conservative than we are. They don't, they wouldn't think of paying reparations to people, at least the mainstream wouldn't. Their borders are more secure now than ours. And I think the parties that are coming into prominence in Europe are much stronger than the conservative movement in the United States. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss out on our latest content.